WCPO 9 I team investigation. The Environmental Protection Agency is ready to settle more than a decade of pollution complaints against a power plant along the Ohio River. But that's raising new questions about the Zimmer plant's future. Investigative reporter Dan Monk is looking into that settlement. He explains why some in nearby Moscow think it doesn't go far enough. Drake Kimberly grew up with the plume of the Zimmer power plant always over his shoulder. For much of his life, the coal-fired plant pumped out more sulfur dioxide and soot than its EPA permits allowed. There needs to be change, like you said, for that to even be a problem, for it to be pushing off stuff where you said it's bothering people is crazy because they make more than enough money to do everything the right way. The EPA has proposed a settlement to resolve pollution violations dating back to 2002 at Zimmer. It opened in 1991 as the world's first power plant to convert from nuclear fuel to coal. This 77-page settlement requires the Zimmer plant's owner to pay a $600,000 civil penalty to the U.S. Justice Department and spend $45,000 on energy-efficient lighting in a nearby school. But that's not nearly enough to satisfy everyone in the shadow of this plant. We're the ones that have to live with it, aren't we? Shouldn't there be something in here for the residents? Jeff Richards is a 20-year resident of Moscow. I mean, I walk my dog, you can smell it outside. What's it smell like? It smells like rotten eggs. Uh, smells like he just lit an old match, you know? Smells like sulfur. EPA records show the plant exceeded sulfur dioxide limits for 90 hours a year on average between 2002 and 2010. In one six-year period, that added up to illegal emissions totaling more than 1,200 tons of the toxic gas that can cause breathing problems. The Zimmer plant also has a troubled history of opacity violations. That happens when smokestacks emit too much soot. The fine particles can get trapped in your lungs and cause major health problems. Settlements like this often have penalties in the millions of dollars. Thomas Smarr is an attorney for Earth Justice, an environmental activist group based in Chicago. In the grand scheme of things, um, this is a relatively light fine for a company that appears to have been cutting corners for quite a long time to save money directly at the expense of public health. Duke Energy ran the plant until 2014. Vistra Energy has owned it since 2018. It says Zimmer is currently in compliance with its permit and the consent decree contains new stringent emission limitations. Make them pay. If you don't make them pay, they'll do it again. Air quality isn't the only consideration for Moscow Village Administrator Andrew Gephardt. Our overall budget is about a half a million dollars and uh, quite a significant amount of that comes from Zimmer and has come from Zimmer over, over the last, well, couple decades for sure. Gephardt said property taxes from the Zimmer plant have steadily declined in recent years because coal-fired plants are declining in appraised value as U.S. energy production shifts to cheaper and cleaner fuel sources. It's certainly a concern. I mean, I, I don't want to hear that the plant that's already been devalued five times and all of a sudden has 600 k and. EPA fines possibly coming down the pike. That, that can't be a good thing. Back on the half pipe, Drake Kimberly is concerned too. Some of his friends work at Zimmer. He'd like that to continue. They should definitely do anything to keep this power plant running for jobs, but they also need to make sure that it's, it's clean. The proposed settlement is not final until a federal court approves it. The Justice Department is taking public comments on the settlement until March 13th. Dan Monk, WCPO 9 I-Team. You can find even more details on the violations that led to the proposed EPA settlement with Zimmer by clicking on Dan's story. It's on WCPO.com.